You're listening to or watching the QC Step Podcast, a podcast to give you the information and the skills that you need to find a job, keep that job, and become a successful employee. My name is Corey Finneran, and welcome to the 28th episode of the QC Step Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to play an interview that I did with an employer uh, in an industry that does hiring over the summer, and you might be interested in it if you would like to earn a good chunk of money over a short period of time. But before we do that, let's take a look at this week's job leads. These job leads are posted on Monday mornings at QCstep.com. There are three Hy-Vee stores that are hiring courtesy clerks right now. That's the Silvis, the Moline Avenue of the Cities, and the Rock Island stores. And you can find the link to the online application on our site. The Hungry Hobo in East Moline, that's on Avenue of the Cities. They're hiring, and they have paper applications, and you can pick them up and then apply in person. And the Petco in Davenport, that's on Elmore next to Coles. And um, they're having open interviews this Thursday at 3 p.m. If you would like more information on any of these leads, or if you'd like help filling out the applications for these positions, you can fill out the contact form that's at the bottom of this post, and um, Gary or Carrie will be in contact with you and give you whatever assistance you'd like. Last week, I had the opportunity to sit down and speak with an employer that hires high school students over the summer. Scott Hem is a team leader with Pioneer, and he hires teenagers for detasseling. Detasseling is a job that's a lot of hard work, um, but it gives you the opportunity to earn a pretty good chunk of money over a short period of time. Also, detasseling is a job that a lot of people have respect for uh, when they're looking at work history. It's a tough job, and if you can succeed in detasseling, employers will probably see you as a hard worker and someone that is dedicated to their job. In this conversation, Scott tells us the advantages of working a detasseling job. So here's my conversation with team leader from Pioneer, Scott Hem. I'm here with Scott Hem, and Scott works with Pioneer. And we're going to talk about a summer seasonal job today, and that's detasseling. So, Scott, for anyone out there that's not familiar with detasseling, can you explain what that is? Uh, simply put, you're going to be brought to a cornfield where we are trying to sterilize one variety of plant to cross-pollinate with another variety of a corn plant to create a hybrid. And so the responsibility of the employees is to either walk down the row or ride a machine down a row and pull out the tassels from the top of the corn stalk. So it's a pretty simple task. Okay. Uh, and what when does uh, the tasseling season typically run? Generally, it'll start right around the week of July 4th and last till about the first week of August. Um, most seasons, we work about three to three and a half weeks, somewhere around 20 total days. Okay. Can you explain kind of the, the typical day of a detasseler for our sure. students? Sure. First thing is getting out of bed really early. That's the toughest thing about the job, in my opinion. You have to be at the bus pickup stations by it's 5.30 a.m. in Rapid City and then by 6 a.m. in Hillsdale. And then from that point, you're on the clock. You're getting paid for the ride out to the fields. Most of our fields will be out near Prophetstown. And uh, once we arrive there, we'll put you in the rows where there's tassels that need removed. And you'll spend the rest of your day either walking or, like I said, riding machines, depending on the height of the corn taking those tassels off. There is lunch breaks in there. Um, you know, the length of your day is going to vary depending on size of the field, number of employees that show up, whether we're walking, whether we're riding. There's a lot of other variables, but for the most part, that's your typical day. You get up bright and early in the morning, ride out. Work so when you say bright and early? It's before the sun. Okay. So... <laughs> And then, so is it typically kind of like an eight-hour day? Six to eight hours? Is that... Um, if we get to six, it's probably... That's about... That's a fairly good day for us. Um, a lot of days will be done right about lunchtime. So again, we'll start 6 in the morning on the bus and hopefully be done by 11, 12 o'clock before it really gets hot. And so that's that's a, a desired day in my opinion. There are days that we'll run to about 2, 2.30, but uh, we've rarely gone beyond that. So okay. Most days you're done by early afternoon and you're home. So. To be able to 
still have fun in the summer yep. and do that kind of stuff. So they're not students aren't giving up their entire summers. By Correct. A lot of my employees still will play, you know, baseball, softball in the summer. Uh, that complicates weekend tournaments, but for night games, that's fine. I have older kids who will work two jobs and will just work the evenings for their other jobs, and then they work for me during the day. So it does open up that possibility. Okay. So what qualities uh, are important for a student to be a successful detasseler? Well, I, I like maturity. I know that's a lot to ask sometimes from a 13 or 14-year-old, but if they are mature enough to be put on an assignment and handle that assignment, that's basically what I'm looking for. It's not the most physically challenging in the world. It's still just pulling a tassel out of a corn stalk. So your size doesn't matter. It's more about whether you can be, whether you're going to be responsible for the task you're given. If I send you out in the field and you just walk through and ignore it because you don't care about the job, that's not good. So I need someone mature enough with enough work ethic that they, they care about the quality of their work. So that's what I'm really looking for in most of my employees. Okay. And we haven't talked about the age requirements yet, mm-hmm. but what are the age requirements? This year, uh, minimum age will be 13 years old. Um, the DuPont, which is the parent company of Pioneer, is up to 13 this year as a way to try to bring in a little more maturity. But uh, it goes from there on up to whatever age you want to be. So I'm now into my 40s and still doing it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> And so what um, is the kind of the starting wage uh, for the position? Okay. For, if you're, it's your first year, you're going to make $8 an hour on the assumption you finish the season in good standing, meaning you don't get fired or quit. So as long as you work the whole season with me, it's $8 an hour. There are bonuses that can be earned. Uh, we have um, perfect attendance bonuses. So if you never miss a day, I give you an automatic $0.50 cents an hour raise right there because I need people that show up consistently. So that's the incentive. Uh, there are longevity bumps, so it's eight dollars for a first year kid. But every year you come back, I give you another fifty cents an hour because experience helps. So you know, second year eight fifty, third year nine, etc. Um, there also I have the discretion to just give away money if I choose to do so. So if I have an employee who shows up and he just or she just knocks it out of the park and they do an awesome job and I recognize that they are hardworking, I can give them whatever I want above. But the minimum would be eight, and then up from there. So, okay, so I have had people before that I've given as much as an extra two dollars an hour just because they were that good, and I really wanted them to come back the next year. Okay, so, so it's one of those situations where um, there's not a, you know, a lot of times with uh, first jobs and stuff, you have to wait three months for that evaluation and mm-hmm. everything to to get a raise. No. So this is something you can come in, work hard right away, yep. and your Definitely. hard work is recognized and you're rewarded for it. Correct. Well, we've got people in the field. They're called the pushers. They're the ones that will follow along behind you to check your job. And I talk to them all the time. You know, how's this person doing? How's that person doing? They are my eyes in the field. And if they tell me, yeah, this kid's doing well, and you know, every day a different pusher says, yeah, this kid's really doing well, that's, that's how you can earn that extra money. So, yeah, right from day one, you can go out and start making lots of cash. Okay, so. good. If a student's interested in detasseling, what's the best way to find out about the job opportunities? Well, I know there are websites out there. If you go and search for the Pioneer website, it will often put you in touch with me as the closest recruiter. Uh, the other way is you can just contact me. You know, my, I'm in the phone book. My name's in the phone book, so you can look me up in there and just call me at home, and that's another way to do it. I can provide that number if you wanted. But. Okay, yeah, we can put All that right. on the site. Well, my home number is 496-9608, and if you really are interested in working, you can just give me a call. I'll take down your address and information and send you out a work packet and And it's just a matter of completing all the, I guess, the legal mumbo-jumbo and sending it back. Sure. So So, um, if a student does decide that they wanted to tassel, Mm -hmm. uh, what just kind of a ballpark figure, what can they expect to earn over the course of the Mm. the season? That's a tough call. I'm not sure because I don't really look at what people make total. I have had people break the thousand dollar barrier, go over a thousand dollars, but it's usually the people who've been there four or five years who get to do a little bit of the extra work. I'd say typically you're looking at between five to seven hundred dollars if you show up every day and you work every day and you, know, you do all the things you're and that's, to do. And that's for you said three or four weeks? Yeah. yeah. About that. Months. So and again that's you have to do what's asked of you. You know, I've had other kids that go, well, I only made like 350 Well, then I'll look at it and say, well, that's because you missed this many days. Sure. And so when you don't work, you don't get paid. That's kind of a life lesson. So, right. right. So, yeah, that's, I would say over $500, but probably less than 1000 unless you're 
one of my longtime employees. Okay, but you so, got to start to, to yes. build up to that. Oh, yes. so. And you know what? There's not a lot of other jobs you can work at the age of 13, 14 years old. So this is an opportunity for younger kids to really learn about work and an opportunity to really get started, I guess you could say, in the workforce. So Okay. All right, Scott. Well, thanks for sitting down with me today and, no and telling our students about detasseling. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like a really good opportunity and a way yeah. to make some money over the summer. See, it's not a hard job. It's just a little bit dirty and a little inconvenient getting out of bed, but it's not that difficult. All right. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Well, thank you to Scott for sitting down and doing that interview with me. If detasseling is something that does interest you, uh, there are different companies for the different areas. Um, so Scott pri- Scott primarily works with the students that are in the Riverdale area and maybe some of the smaller towns that feed into United Township High School. Team Corn is another company uh, that, that works with some of the other schools. So if you're interested in detasseling, get in contact with your step teacher or your co-op teacher or Gary or Carrie when you see them in your school. And um, if, if you don't see them and you would like for them to get a hold of you for these opportunities, you can fill out the contact form that's at the bottom of this post, or you can email info at qcstep.com. Well, that does it for this week's episode. Thank you for listening and downloading, and we will be back next week with another episode of the QC Step Podcast. Podcast.